Hello YouTube, it's been a while since my last video. Um, today I'm going to do a multi-part series, maybe one or two or maybe even three, of me repowering this old Moto mower somewhere probably in the 60s, judging by the hood. I am going to replace this old Kohler K161S which I'm sure is an awesome motor, but I'm having a fuel issue. I'm guessing either fuel pump or carb, and it runs on choke, and then it dies once it starts starving for fuel. Um, I don't know if it's the fuel pump or the carb. Either way, I can buy a set of Chinese cheapies and maybe get me by for a little while and be fighting the same problem here in a year or once the fuel gets old because I don't use it that often. Or the route I decided to take for this fan, sorry about that. It's quite warm in these shipping containers. I decided to go with the Predator. 212cc, 6.5 horsepower. I replaced an old Briggs and Stratton on our go-kart here with it. Been very reliable. It fires up one or two poles with choke. I shut the fuel off after every use. And so this horizontal shaft lawn tractor engine should be a fairly simple replacement. I did realize that the shaft size, I think this is one inch where the Predators are three quarter inch. I bought a new pulley for the one belt. This dual pulley, I'm guessing, is for some kind of forward attachment back in the day. Maybe a snowblower or something. I'm not sure. Something I don't have, so I didn't buy a dual pulley setup. I just have a single. Um, as for fitment, I don't know yet. I'll know once I get this motor out. This cooler is mounted onto a platform down there. Yeah, it's too hard to see now. But it sits on rubber bushings, which I thought was neat to keep vibration down. Not that that motor really vibrated. It was kind of a smooth running motor. I wish I could keep it, but I just don't want to mess with it. I'm going to keep the motor and uh, maybe I'll tinker with it sometime down the road. I, I kind of started pulling the electrical out, which, my goodness, the simplicity of the Predator motors will be welcomed compared to this old point system. It was probably the cat's meow back in the day, but today uh, it's just too much of a headache for a simple tractor that I'm going to use to pull that. Femco 30 gallon sprayer around my pasture. So, I'm gonna get started ripping this thing out. I'll gonna cut this video up into a couple different clips since I can't hold my phone and videotape at the same time. And then, uh, I'm gonna start by completely getting rid of all the electrical. I'm gonna try to keep it all intact just in case I wanna put it together sometime and I don't have to worry about splicing it. Well, Eddie, the certified small engine repair mechanic, showed up. Why too? He left the sandbox to come help me. Slow progress, though. Why too? What? Why too? Tractor. Yeah. Tractor. How does it go? Right. How does it go? Fast. Fast? Yeah. How's it, what's it sound like? Fast. Okay. I was wondering if this tractor might have been repainted at one time because I can see white coming through and some of the old moto mowers were white, maybe even the Cub Cadets, but uh, I just removed some kind of flux capacitor looking electrical part off of this mount here and uh, unless that's a common replacement part or if they did repaint it they stripped everything down underneath the mount is still bright red, so I have a feeling this was an original red tractor. Oh, yeah. I thought about wow. showing you guys what all comes with wow. these wow. Harbor Freight Predator engines. Wow. I think I got this shipped to the door for like $116 with the code. You lose the discount by paying for shipping, but with the coronavirus going on, our Harbor Freight has a limited amount of people and it's kind of far away, so I just shipped it. It was worth the extra 10, 15 bucks. Instruction manual. Wow. Wow. Spark plug wrench. Styrofoam. Ooh, two. It's 
guy is pumped about anything with a motor. All right, let's see. One-handed if there's anywhere I can pick it up. Uh, I'm going to set you guys down real quick. Ah, sorry about that. We're gonna do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. I guess let me uh, line them up the same way. Just pull these out. The weight difference. I bet there's 20 pounds, probably. Wow. Weight difference between the two, maybe more. Um, this has the alternator there built in or whatever they call it, which is probably five, six pounds itself. Watch out, watch out little dude. Um, right off the bat, it looks like this is gonna have a little skinnier bolt pattern. Not as wide lengthwise or width, definitely. So hopefully I can figure something out. On the tractor itself, I got room for adjustment front to back but nothing side to side, so I'm gonna have to do some drilling. And a little interesting tidbit, the rubber mount that I was bragging about earlier for anti-vibration, the back ones were broke. That's probably just gonna sit there. All the massive torque from that 212 cc motor is gonna have to be held on by these front two, which is still solid. I guess one thing he likes more than motors is boxes. Um, shaft size, definitely different. One inch, three quarter. I have a pulley to take care of that, so I'm not even gonna try to take them pulleys off. I'm gonna leave this engine just like it sits. I'm gonna probably put it back in that box if it'll fit. I doubt it will. And uh, put it in storage for a future project. For my original red color comment I made before, I'm not 100% sure now, because I'm finding this kind of a teal color, which would be a very strange color to go with red and silver. If you can see right there, it's shining through, and there's little specks right there shining through teal, so kind of an aqua. So, curious to see what color this tractor would have been. Um, Predator engine, no go on the factory. Uh, rubber mounted motor platform, especially with the motor mount broke. Looks like maybe a ground cable still hooked up there. I'll have to take off. Plan B is going to be remove these motor mounts, expose bare frame here, drill holes where I need to for the Predator engine, bolt her down that way. All right, little tiny obstacle. Um, if I were to put the Predator motor in between my clutch dash brake mounting bar and the front old engine mount. Number one, my belt's not long enough. I'd have to go get a new belt, which not a huge deal, but I'd like to get this thing going today if possible. And number two, the oil drain plugs on these Predator motors. You got two of them, forward and the one in the back there. They perfectly fit right there and there. They were touching either one. And so you wouldn't be able to drain the oil. So what I'm gonna do, I'd love to have some metal risers so it'd be a little stronger, but I do not. So I just cut some, I think this is like one inch pine. Oh, and bonus, the factory frame rails have adjustment holes that actually line up with the Predator motor holes. Isn't that crazy? Something made in the 60s lines up, but there's nothing in the rear. There is some back there, but my steering box is in the way. Uh, yeah, I don't wanna mess with that. I'm just gonna drill two new ones. So what I'm gonna do is mark four holes, drill both through the wood, and I don't need a drill on this side, I just need to drill through the wood. That'll give me some adjustment. Ah, uh, no it won't. If I drill two permanent holes back there, there'll be no adjustment. I have to get it right the first time. All right. All right, I got the motor mounted with my wood blocks. It actually turned out all right. Nice and solid. See how long they last. 
If they start cracking or rotting out, it'd take about 30 minutes to replace them. I have yet to tighten down my pulley. I got this at a hardware store, it's about 14 bucks. Um, I figured it'd be easier just finding a new pulley instead of taking the one inch pulleys off that cooler and reducing them down or however they make a sleeve. Sound like a pain in the butt. Worth the 14 bucks. Um, I went ahead and mounted the motor where I thought it was lined up just by eyesight. And then with the pulley loose, I can center it up on the tensioner pulley, which is what grabs and causes it to drive. Um, I had to put the motor kind of where it's at. There was not a lot of room for forward to back because if I came back anymore, that bolt would hit the rear oil fill cap. I'm sure I could have plugged that with something else to get a little bit more clearance. Um, I just hope I'm back enough to where when you press in the clutch release dash brake, it will put enough slack on that belt and cause it to not creep forward and actually be in a neutral dash stop position. Uh, I'll have to figure that out when I fire it up. And if it's not, I think I'll just have to get a smaller tensioner pulley, just a little bit smaller, and that will give me my slack I need. But it might be all right how it is, hopefully. Anyways, um, factory cable went to this side of the cooler. Adjustments for this are not needed because my cable is long enough to get to where it needs to be. Just barely long enough, but it's gonna work. Um, these Predator engines are nice because they come from the factory where your throttle will stay put. Sorry about my camera work, I'm sweating. The throttle is meant to stay put when in the factory, but if you're gonna run a cable for a remote throttle, there is a 10 millimeter bolt right there. It's a lock washer or lock nut. You loosen that up a bit, that frees up your throttle. There is your throttle cable keeper there. Loosen that up, put your conduit of your throttle cable into that, tighten it up. Hook your, see if you can see those holes, right there. Hook your throttle cable into one of those three holes. Bing, bang, boom. You got remote throttle. Now, for the kill switch, I was going to run a remote kill switch where the old key switch was for quick shut off, but I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I can reach my hand when the hood's shut. That's where the hood rests. Fits in there nicely. Almost looks like it's supposed to be. I can, from the seat, sitting in the seat, I can reach down right through there on off while it's running i haven't tried it out yet but i just sat on it to see and i have access to pull start it from the seating position so it's almost perfect um i just don't think it could have could have found a better replacement for putting on a motor made in i imagine the late 2018 19 20 whenever it was made putting it on a tractor made in the 60s, and it pretty much bolts up. So I will be right back with the fire up video. All right, and don't forget that uh, these little Predator motors come with zero gasoline and zero oil. So I added half a quart of just a Super Dupe TMS 1540. It's just a regular diesel engine oil. Um, I run diesel engine oil on most of my small engines. I, a lot of the new stuff doesn't have a lot of zinc. Diesel oils still have some zinc left in it. Air-cooled engines love zinc, so I, that's what I've always ran. I run that Let's Go mower back there, a couple of these Predators. I've got a Skag with a 1,000 hours on it that has a 23.5 horsepower Kawasaki. That's what I run in it. Um, just had good luck with it. Anyways, I'm going to do a first-time start. I put some fuel in it, oil, and I turn the ignition on. Gas is on, choke is applied, um, throttle is all the way down to turtle. Let's see if she'll fire for the first time since it left the factory in China. Give it a little bit of fuel, maybe kill the choke.
Fuel the fuel. Go. Let's see. No choke. Fuel's on. No throttle. Okay. I took about five stars, or five points to start, maybe six. Some of that might have been my operator error. I should have turned the choke off right away and it fired that first time. Uh, sounds good. Now, nothing hits. What did I do wrong? I forgot to show you guys a quick bit of how easy it is to, while sitting on the tractor, build a motor, motor off, and then how easy it is to start the motor. That's all it is. Everything done from the captain's chair. No on and off. Very happy with this spot. when they're breaking in, you're just starting up for the first time and getting hot, they reek of burnt plastic. I don't know if it's some kind of oil or have on the muffler or something, but I got this old tractor back in action, hopefully for a long time. I went ahead and left the battery in, powered my sprayer. Now it won't ever be charged with the motor, but I can put a triple charger on it when I'm not using it. Uh, Back, and maybe freshen up that red paint. Better keep the speed of the tracker for a long, long time. Uh, well, if you like these kind of videos, doing dumb stuff here around the farm, big farm, five acre farm, just uh, like and subscribe and comment. I'll uh, try to put out videos a little bit more often, a little bit more than one every eight years. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.